Hey everyone, we're here in Florence this morning. It's about 8 o'clock. I flew in for a few days. Um, right now we're in uh, Piazza Annunziata. I figured I'd take a video and post it on Facebook uh, to show you all a couple of the squares. Uh, Piazza Annunziata is, I'd say, northeast of the Duomo, within walking distance. In fact, you can see the Duomo from the distance. Um, it's a, a popular square. Uh, especially during the Renaissance time. Right in the back of me is the church. Uh, this was the church that um, the Medici family went to uh, for, for many years um, at, at a certain point in history. Uh, and you have... Uh, that street is called Via dei Servi. Um, it's named after there was a, a Catholic order called Servi di Maria which uh, is, my understanding, is um, an order of the Catholic Church. Um, I think that uh, back then many people who followed the Catholic Church in more radical ways, um, they started different orders. Uh, and this particular one, you know, for example, uh, maybe nuns were part of an order or monks. Uh, there are people that, that followed and maybe wanted to live a life of poverty, things like that. There was this popular order at the time called Servi di Maria, and this is the church where they based themselves out of. Um, so, they I guess they lived here at the time, during the Renaissance, maybe 13, 1400s. And this street was the street that people came to to get here. Uh, it was why they call it Via dei Servi. A couple things as we walk that I'll just point out, things that I've learned. Um, at, at some point throughout history in the Renaissance time, you can see that window behind me in the top right that's open. The story goes that um, maybe, you know, a few hundred years ago there was a woman and a man, and I don't know 100% if I'm telling you the story accurately, you can look it up, but I remember that there was, um, there was a couple they were madly in love with each other, but he had to leave. He had to go to the war or something. Or he had to leave for, for whatever reason. And so she vowed to stay and wait for him at that window. And so she was there every single day for her entire life, and he never showed up. And so they say that that window today remains open because her ghost continues to look out the window every day. It's 52 degrees here in Florence, but I've been in this square when it's below freezing and that window is always open. Um, another another interesting uh, fact in history is that I said earlier that the Medicis would come to Piazza Nunziata to, to go to this church. One day um, when Cosimo the uh, first was, was walking here um, he had someone plan to assassinate him and so they had two assassins in a window maybe about five minutes walking that way. But the Medicis, they had their people who, um, who discovered the plot. And so, obviously, he was not assassinated. And um, the assassins were then, were then killed. But the window where they stood out, um, stood out from is, is paved. It's, it's covered now. Um, and so they say that it's paved as a, as a monument in memory of you know the, the foiled plot to assassinate him. So that's that way. Now I haven't been in this church. I think this is the church here, so let's go see if it's open. Looks like there's prayer going on. I don't want to go in there. They're all very quiet and praying. But 
This is, I guess, the entrance. You can see. All right, so now we're gonna walk over towards Piazza San Marco. It's another famous square in Florence. And all this is, like I said, five minutes, six minutes walking distance from the Duomo, which is the center center. And this is still considered the center of where we are right now. Piazza San Marco, where we're going, and we'll be there in about a minute or two. Um, it's popular because there's uh, there's it's a main section where the bus is. There's a bus stop there. Many bus stops throughout the day. There's also the taxi stand there. So people, it's it's an important square for transportation. Other than that, there's also a beautiful church there. I'll see if that's open. And uh, there's Cafe San Marco, which is my favorite place to have breakfast. They have great pastries there and coffee. So you can see all the buses here. Being in Florence in the winter is one of my favorite times of the year to be here for many reasons. For one, it has a lot of Christmas spirit. There's lights all over the city and I'll take some photos and post them during the evening. Uh, there's Christmas trees, you have many different uh, monuments for Christmas. The nativity scene is over by the Duomo. Uh, other than the Christmas spirit, it's cold here and I live in Florida, originally from New Jersey, so I miss the seasons, I miss the winter. Uh, so I can experience that when I'm here in Florence. Also, economically, it's good because it's um, it's actually a little cheaper to come here during the winter. So the flights are better. There's also a lot of great sales here. If you want to do some shopping? All right, so we're we're now approaching the church, San Marco Church. See if it's open. And then I'm going to walk you down via Cavour towards the Duomo. And I'll complete this video when we reach the Duomo. Alright, let's see if it's open.
Grazie Museo. No grazie. Buona giornata. Okay. It's right outside the church there. All right, so that was just another beautiful church of Florence, one of many. I love that church. All right, so now we're at Via Cavour, and I'll tell you about the history of Via Cavour. Um, Via Cavour is one of the largest, widest streets. I don't know the largest, but the widest streets in Florence. It may be the widest street in Florence. Via Cavour was named uh, via Cavour in the 1800s after the politician Camillo Cavour, but prior to that it was called Via Larga, which means wide. Uh, it starts from the Duomo. Actually, there's a street called Via dei Martelli, which is kind of small, which leads into Via Cavour. So it's kind of like Via Cavour goes to the Duomo because it's it's kind of straight, but for a short period, it's Via dei Martelli. So, anyway, it goes from the Duomo all the way to uh, Piazza San Marco. After that, there's Piazza della Libertà. And then after that, I think you get to all other residential areas. I think the stadium is that way. Uh, but you can see here, we're walking towards the Duomo. Via Larga uh, was around over a thousand years, my understanding. Uh, it, it became more popular when the powerful Medici family during the Renaissance period started moving here and buying property. They even built their palace, which we're going to pass in a moment, um, Palazzo Medici. And once they did that, a lot of noblemen came to this, to this street and started building their own properties. And so it became very popular in, in the 1300s. And there's a lot of nice stores here. But we'll, I'll show you the palace in a moment. This place just opened up a couple years ago. It's uh, the Queen's Chips. They have not Italian food there. They have French fries and chicken nuggets. And look at this, this is a Subway. And then you have a McDonald's. I don't know if you can see the street lights you can I don't know if you can see that in the video but at night there are lights crossing from building to building and it's really a, a beautiful sight which again I'll take photos of and post so from from Piazza San Marco to the Duomo it's about a six to seven minute walk This is a store that's also popular in the United States. They sell paper products, pens. This is a new supermarket that just opened up called Pam Local. This is a famous uh, children's toy store called Dreoni, right here. For those of you that want to come to Florence and bring your children, it's like a museum for kids in there. And another great thing about being in Florence is that you can look in these windows and you can see a whole bunch of beautiful frescoes. All right, so we're approaching the palace now. Medici's lived at right there in the corner. I don't know if you can see that, it says Galleria Via Larga. 
in memory of the old name street. Here it is. Isn't that fantastic? The architecture, those stones. And it is a museum today also. It's worth going in. There's also a nice cinema here on this street. I met a guy on an airplane. He, he worked at this cinema. I've never been there, but they have a lot of independent films. Mostly Italian films, I think. I gotta check that out at some point. I think we just passed it. This is some government building. A lot of times when I pass this, there are police officers outside, security. I'm not really sure what there is there. Actually, here it is. See the, the guards there. Okay. Palace, Medici Palace. And there, Medici Palace is all over Florence because Medici's ruled for for many years. There's a palace on the other side of the Arno River. Oh, by the way, where we were earlier going from Piazza Nunziata to San Marco, right down that street, like in one minute walk, is where the original Michelangelo's David is located. Okay, here we go. So I think technically we're on uh, Via dei Martelli, but you can see we just kept going straight. Here's Italy, which is also popular in the United States. We're almost at the Duomo. name it's a bank it's called Que Banca that's the name of the bank it's like saying what bank Could you imagine having a bank in the United States called what bank By the way, if anyone comes to Florence and they need to change their money, you might want to think twice before changing your money at this place. They have many locations all throughout Florence. Best and fast, best and fast change. Not the best place to change your money. All right, so this is the Christmas tree. Looks like they're doing some renovation there. This is the, the Battistero. This is where all the babies got baptized throughout the centuries. I'll show you the nativity scene. All right, so here's the Duomo again. Check in later, post some more photos. Bye.